today's June 6th and we're starting to dry out pretty significantly. We haven't had any major rain since, I don't know, sometime in early May. So, you know, we're eking up on a month, three weeks, a month of not having any significant rain. And so our goal here for this grassland, and this is the silva pasture here behind me, our goal is when the rains come for that land to drink in the rain so that we can, one, grow plants, we can support the microbes, those little critters in the soil, so that they can continue to do their function. And all of this stuff together, the plants, the microbes, all of this creates a healthy soil and a healthy ecosystem. And so we want our soils to be able to do this. We want them to have the capacity. And so how is it that we make our soils able to do this? That's what we want to explore. But first I want to tell this story. It's been a number of years ago. We had a soil health specialist. His name's Doug Peterson. Uh, he used to work for the Natural Resources Conservation Service or NRCS. And he came out and we had never done an infiltration test before. And it's really a simple test. And it can be quite like eye-opening to do one. So I recommend take, do one. It, they're not that hard to do and it's fun to see the results. It's, you, you can learn a lot from it. So Doug Peterson came out and we took these metal rings and they don't have a bottom or a top on them. They're just like a ring. And they're so big around, but yay big around. You drive that into the soil and you wanna get it down in the soil so that we're gonna take a beaker of water and we're gonna pour that in our ring. And this beaker of water, we've measured out the water in it, it's equal to one inch of rain. And so we pour that in our ring. In other words, we just made it rain one inch instantly. And we sit and we wait and we see how long it takes for that water to drain down into the soil. How fast does the land drink in that rain? And so when we did these soil health infiltration ring tests, and really this is kind of a measure of the health of your soil, obviously we're directly measuring how fast the water runs into the soil, but the healthier the soil, the better it runs in. So we went to a diverse native grassland and we measured the infiltration of that inch of rain into the soil. And then we also did a fescue field on a neighboring, on like the next slope over, tried to get our hill slope position as close as we could. And both were under the same management. And so we were like trying to measure the infiltration on each of these. In the diverse native grassland where we had a diversity of plants growing, in one minute and 25 seconds, that first inch of water or rain soaked into the soil. In the fescue pasture, it took about twice that long. It was three minutes. Now the soil scientists, the soil health specialists, they say that first inch of rain is not as important because, well, if it's really dry like it is today, of course, it's going to soak into the soil faster. Uh, if it just rained yesterday, it's not going to soak in as fast. So if you go ahead and put the first inch of water in there, sure, go ahead and measure it, but really measure that second inch, then you're comparing more apples to apples in different, different days, different situations. So the second inch of rain, the diverse native grassland, that rain got into the soil, that inch of, second inch of rain, it took it 12 minutes. In the fescue field, it took it about 33 minutes. So it took about three times as long, just under three times as long, for the rain to run into the soil. So what we can infer from this is that the soil health of those two particular places was probably better, and I say probably, because we, this is not a scientific study. We didn't replicate this a lot of times to make it a scientific study, but these are just our observations. The soil health was better in that diverse native grassland than it was in the fescue. So while we were out there in the field, waiting for that water to run down in the soil in our ring there, we had plenty of time. In one place we had like 30 some minutes and the other place we had less, but we got to pilfering around in, you know, in under the soil and just looking at the plants and looking at the things. And what we started realizing is in the diverse native grassland, there are so many like earthworm, they call them castings. It looks like this little pile of, you know, cottage cheese nodules up here on the soil, real small. Um, so these, these earthworm castings are a sign of earthworm presence, of course. And so the diverse native grassland had a lot of those. And if you think about it, when 
it rains and we have water up here on the soil surface as you know the rain comes down hits that soil and then it's looking for a place to go either downhill with the gravity towards the stream or into the soil well if you've got an earthworm hole that's a perfect place for the water to just go right into that soil and so I think that was part of the reason that we were seeing what we were seeing as far as infiltration is because that diversity of plants was supporting a healthy population of earthworms. And that healthy population of earthworms, it supports health, soil health in a lot of ways. But one of those ways is by creating these holes down into the soil that the earthworms have been in. I think another one of the factors that we were seeing is that in a diverse native grassland, there's this diversity of plants. You have these native warm season grasses, native cool season grasses, native forbs and legumes, all mixed together in the same grassland. It's basically a grassland like the bison would have seen. And so when you take and you combine these plants together, that is a real good recipe for soil health, for really good soil health. One of the soil health principles is to have a diversity of plants, also to have plants green in all the seasons, to have a living root in the soil as much of the year as possible. And so basically a diversity of plants is what gives you these, these are, the soil health principles are so tied to having this diversity of plants. So microbes are these little bitty critters that you really can't see with the naked eye that are, they have a huge function in soil health. And so these microbes basically are producing this, these glues, they call them biotic glues, biotic meaning like living, like biology, living, biotic glues. So it's this glue from this living, living critters that clump the soil up. So if you think of like cottage cheese, cottage cheese has all of these little clumps in it, right? And so you can picture that if we had these little clumps for soil, so our biotic glues have glued this soil into these, and when I say glue, don't think like hard and dried out, but think of like in clumps, like the cottage cheese, basically these biotic glues, because they're in clumps, the water can run down between the clumps of cottage cheese or of soil. Now, if you compare that to something like yogurt, yogurt doesn't have those little clumps, and you can picture like trying to get water to flow down between the little granules of yogurt. The granules are so small that it's really hard to get that water down through them. So basically a diversity of plants gives us a good population of, of these microorganisms in the soil, which produce these biotic glues, which make these not these little clumps in our soil so that the, we have, we call it aggregation. Our soil is aggregated so that the water can flow down between them. So I think this diversity of plants in a diverse native grassland is contributing also to the land drinking in the rain and that we're producing more of these biotic glues and creating a healthier soil in the, in the meantime. So when I think about land that drinks in the rain and the soil health that's associated with that, because for the soil to be healthy, it needs to be able to drink in the water. It's just, they go hand in hand. When I think about these things, I think about the ecosystem services, the things that the land did, that this healthy soil, the land that drinks in the rain, that they did for the ecosystem as a whole. You know, back when the bison would have roamed and the native grasslands were across the landscape, there was basically, the grasslands were doing certain things for the ecosystem. And so one of those things that I really think about is fewer floods. So the floods that we experience, if we don't get the water in the soil up here, then it washes down the hill slope during the flood, during the rain event, and heads for the creek. But there's nothing ideal about that from the standpoint of not only our human infrastructure, but also from the ecosystem that is dependent upon that creek. The animals, the, all of these things that depend upon that creek would much rather see that water run into the soil and come out slowly in our springs and feed out through the soil rather than making a mad dash for the Gulf of Mexico all on the day that it rained. So, you know, I think about some of the endangered species that we have here in Missouri, as far as like mussels or crawdads, they depend on healthy water ecosystems for their success. 
And so if we can have that healthy ecosystem on the hills up here, it has way more impact on the streams down there than I think we usually think about. So one other ecosystem I think about as far as the land drinking and the rain and the consequences it has for the environment around it, if the land can drink in that rain, then there's more water in the soil. And you say, well, that's kind of obvious. And it is, but the consequences of that are that the microbes, the, so the little microorganisms, these are the soil health builders. Um, of course, plants are the other part of that. But these soil health builders have to have water, both the plants and the microbes, in order to continue building soil health. If it gets too dry, things just go into a state of like pause. They just put pause on until the right conditions come back. So that extra water in the soil gives us water for the microbes, gives us water for the plants. And if something like forage production for bison, for cattle, for any sort of livestock is your goal, well, of course, water in the soil makes a ton of sense, right? Because we're trying to grow plant material for those animals to consume. And so that's a natural byproduct of what the ecosystem can provide by being healthy, by having those healthy soils. So when I think back to the land that drinks in the rain and it producing a useful crop for those who farm it, I, I think that really resonates with me because this is a diverse native grassland that we actually graze. So we, we graze it with livestock. We have this healthy native ecosystem here, the plants, the other animals, the wildlife. We just dumped a deer about 20 foot away from us. It held in there for about three or four minutes while we were standing around here and then finally it jumped and ran. But as I think about the, the, this land and it's just this native ecosystem basically, with a grazer in that picture to replicate what the bison would have done on that grassland. And of course you can graze it with gr bison today. But when I think about this, you know, basically the land is drinking in that rain to produce a useful crop of forage, which is consumed by our livestock, which can then be consumed either meat or milk by our people. And so I think about this concept and I just think about what a holistic picture this grassland is to be able to drink in that rain, to have those healthy soils because of this diversity of plants. So when I think of land that drinks in the rain, I think of three different parts actually, uh, as far as water in the soil. So the first part is land that drinks in the rain. The second part would be hold that water there when you get it, don't let it escape. And that the third part is actually don't let it escape. So holding it, and those are two different processes that we'll talk about. And so this is actually one part of a little series of videos about soil health, about getting water into the soil, about those ecosystem services. And so if you'd like to see the others, you can watch these videos here. It's just been so fun to share about diverse native grasslands because it's a real passion of ours here at Hamilton Native Outpost. We love to share about native plants and how they impact the land.